What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream today. We'll be talking again about the manager, Mikel Arteta, who has signed a new three-year contract with Arsenal Football Club till the 2025 season. Now, just for anybody tuning in, I did do a stream earlier today. Kevin Campbell joined me for about 20 minutes um, where we went into a little bit more detail about his interview and this, that, the other. So if anyone wants to go and watch that back afterwards, go and watch that one back. I will still obviously talk about it in this stream as well, but I went a little bit more in detail on that one. So uh, yeah, big up to everyone who tuned in for that. Let's get into it again, people. Let me slow down the chat a little bit. Uh, I'm calling it Granite Xhaka mode today. I've had enough. It's Granite Xhaka mode. Um, and we'll talk about Arteta and so on and so forth. Jay Dizzle said, say his name with some respect. Big Mickey Rolls, the Teflon Don. We can't get rid of him, man. Big up the C-C-C-C unit. Big up to all the people then. Big up everyone watching on Twitch and everyone tuned in on YouTube. Oz said, big up Curtis Therapy Part 2. We got to break it down again. You know them ones. Hey, K Guna, it's love, bro. Don't worry, man. It's all good, man. Community settings. You know that, people. Make sure you lick down that like button, subscribe, and all of that good stuff, people. Um, but we're going to break it down. We're going to do the press conference reaction. I was a little bit... It caught me on the hop this morning. I can't lie. So my, my opinion was a little bit more built on emotion. I've had to calm down and weigh it up a little bit now and, and kind of... Just take it for what it is. Um, I think sometimes you got to think the way we look at it as fans and the way the club looks at it can be totally different. Um, and that's the problem, you know. For me, my issue was more the timing. I think they should have made him achieve something major before he was handed the new contract. But the club are looking at it like he's already achieved what they wanted for this season. And in the the reality is, if you're in a job and you're set a target and you achieve it, you should be rewarded. So should we have a bigger problem um, with the Cronkies or with Mikel Arteta? Because Mikel Arteta was clearly told, get Arsenal back in the Europa League. And he's done it. And they're happy and they've rewarded him. So... As I said, the way we look at things, the way the club looks at things is two totally different things. And it shows you sometimes how, as a fan, if, if, you're, not, if you're not connected and you're divided as a fan base, you have very little power or say about what's happened. We put a poll up in the first stream, are you happy with Arteta's new deal? 53% said no, 47% said yes. So it's very close. It shows that the opinion of Arteta is mixed. Um, and that's why we have very little say on what happens. You, at the end of the day, as a football fan, you have to accept whatever the club says. Uh, the, all we can do now is back the club and hope that they achieve something major. There's not a lot else we can do. Um Forrest said, hey, Curtis, at least you got more waffle content. Good for the channel, bad for the football terms. Arteta is a fraud. Even if he gets top four, he will not win the Champions League or title. Waste of time for another three years. More waffle, people. Get the syrup ready, man. King Boba said, cone man music, dice pineapples. Cone so fresh. <laughs> Mickey Rolfs, the boss. Rolfs, eh? He ain't going nowhere, man. The Teflon Don himself. Uh, Chris said, the worrying thing about it is no matter how bad things get over the next three years, the owners will stick by him. Uh, big up Fabric Breeze, who says the Twitch gang. I think in an interesting way that what the Champions League will do is expose Arteta and the board as to whether they're good enough. I actually think the Champions League can work against the owner and the manager because... I don't think you can hide in the Champions League. I think you can go in the Europa League. You can stroll through the group. You'll get to at least the quarterfinal, semi-final. I think the Champions League separates the men from the boys. You know, you, Everyone's going to look at the board and the owners and say, right, are you really going to back this manager? Are you willing to spend 200 million? Are you willing to break the transfer record to get us the right striker? With... Mikel Arteta, he can't hide anymore. You're at the top level. You're playing against the top managers, your Ancelotti's, your Peps, your Klopp's, your, your Simeone's. You're going to have to go to grounds you've never been to against better teams. And if he can't handle it, people will say, well, there you go. 
You gave he got Champions League, he went there and it didn't happen. Or they'll say, look, the owners didn't really back him properly. So I also think in a, in a way it will expose what this club is really about. Are you about that life? It's all right going in a press conference saying we want to get back to the top. All right, show us how we get back to the top. So in a way, I think it I think it unravels itself one way or another. He will either become the manager that a lot of people think he is going to become, which a lot of people think he will be a top manager, or he will fall short and it will unravel and we will see that he isn't as good as some people think. So, listen, it is what it is. We, whether we like it or not, we got to take it. And that's the sad thing about football. You know, you kind of sign a lifetime deal when you decide to support a football club. The reality is this. If he gets Champions League, you have to give the man credit. You do, whether you like him or not. And you know I don't like him. What my problem is... Oh, no, I shouldn't say I don't like him. I don't rate him. Um, but what my problem is, if you give him a contract and he misses out on top four, then what? Then what do you do? You're still going to stick with him. But, you know, like people say, a lot of these contracts nowadays are not worth the paper they're written on. And also, I think where the problem is, just for example... Edu will be in negotiations now with new players, right? He'll be speaking to players about coming to Arsenal. If he's speaking to Darwin Nunes, just say, for example, Darwin Nunes, and you say, right, this is what we want to offer you, five-year deal, 100 grand a week, blah, blah, blah. He's going to go, yeah, cool, money, football. What's happening with the manager? Your manager's got a year left. Why would you sign a five-year contract at a club where that manager has one year left on his deal? Because your worry as a player is always going to be, what happens if the manager who signed me leaves the football club and then I'm not in the team? You've seen with the likes of Pepe and players like that, Arteta's come in, he doesn't feel him, your career's over at that football club. Now, I'm not saying that Arteta should have got the new contract. I'm saying as a club, a lot of us will be looking at it in a negative manner, me included. I'm thinking... This guy hasn't done enough yet. But the club will be saying, we need stability. Edu needs the best opportunity to go and do his job. He needs to say, the manager's got three years. This is what we can offer you. This is where we're going. So it's to create a stability around the football club. Whether we agree with that or not, we're going to get the, com the, the comments and the thoughts of, of, of the community. Snake Eye said, agree a thousand percent, Big C. If he makes the top four and we get Champions League, I can see Arteta falling apart when he meets the big clubs. Listen, he'll sink or swim. He will, sink, he will either become a top manager or he will fall short. One thing's for sure, that spotlight of the Champions League is different. It ain't Europa League where you're playing Rapid Vienna and Dundalk and you can play your young players and beat them. You're playing Real Madrid on Wednesday with the TV cameras there. You know, we're, we're probably second or third seed now, I believe. Um, so we're going to get one or two top teams in the group if we qualify. So let's see. Uh, we all knew it was coming. It was just a matter of when. Cronkays love a puppet. They want to play with him a little bit longer. This is the reality. If you take away the emotion of you being a, f uh, a football fan, an Arsenal fan, if you was the Cronkays right now, who are not Arsenal fans, who don't have that same emotion, Mikel Arteta is a dream for them. He's on half the wages Arsene Wenger was on. He defends them in the press conferences. He takes all the flack. He's signing young players. He's took 40% off the wage bill. And he's on the verge of getting them Champions League. Europa League guaranteed, which was their target. They are absolutely going to give this guy a new contract. That's the sad thing. The, the ownership may be a bigger problem than the manager at this football club, if we're being honest, and, and, and that's, that's the problem. Three more years of work experience, he's still learning, and that's the problem. Pep started at Barca as a novice too. I, I think that we can't do any kind of Pep Guardiola um, comparison. We just can't. Pep walked into a team with Lionel Messi, you know, Iniesta, Xavi, um, PK. I think Puyol might have been there. The, the levels are totally different. This guy walked into a team with, with Mustafi and David Luiz, so we can't do that. Um, TM101, he's the cheaper option. I get it, but he hasn't hit top four yet. That's the thing. The thing is, PR, and we talk about PR, they would have worked the PR. His agent will be saying to Arsenal, hey, listen, I've had a phone call from PSG. Yeah, Poch is leaving. He used to play for PSG. They like the look of him. 
What? My, yeah, someone called me from Man City the other week. I'm not going to name names, but someone from Man City called me, said, listen, Pep's not happy about the Champions League exit. You know, they'd like Arteta. They might take it. They would have played the PR game with Arsenal. Clubs are after him. He's got a year left. Do you want to give him that new deal or not? And Arsenal probably played right into their hands and threw it at him. Um, it's business, unfortunately. Um South London's finest. Big up yourself, bro. He said, I've got a feeling Edu's job is under the microscope for the Cronkays in the summer because they could easily get a better technical direct. 100%. 100%. First of all, Arteta probably likes working with Edu because they're similar age. They both played for Arsenal. He can probably manipulate him a little bit. If you've got a Michael Edwards or someone like that, it's different. I think Edu will be under big pressure this year because he needs to negotiate big contracts. Um... Read on Twitter. Um, where is that comment? Wasim said, read on Twitter, Arsenal wanted the contract signed. PSG showing interest in Arteta. The PR's already there. Of course they'll do that. They'll throw that all over the place. They'll go, you know, oh, well, PSG were looking at him, so we had to give him a new deal. They'll, they'll play it. They know exactly what they're doing with this. So, listen, I'm just trying to add some balance, right? There's no point in me just coming on here and going... He's rubbish. We should have got rid of him. Blah, blah, blah. He's here. He's here. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, the timing was strange. Um, the timing was definitely strange for me. And um, But they will say the timing was perfect because they will say, we've just won three games. We play Leeds next week. And this is the perfect time for them. Um to drop it so i mean i was shocked this morning but it is what it is people let me know your thoughts in the comments um about Mikel arteta i'll put another poll rp kevin samuels i didn't even know about that is that true big up troy Josh Shaw said big up curtis arteta has achieved kse's europa league target so far we've benefited from other teams failure but that's their problem we need to get top four because next season we'll drop off with the extra games all i can say for me, I don't care what they're telling me. He needs to get fourth. I'm sorry. I will be having meltdowns on this channel if we finish fifth and Tottenham get fourth. If he gets top four, I'll throw a party on here, mate, and eat the humble pie, get Kevin Campbell on it, you know, to tell me it's the players. But we got to get fourth. But clearly, they've shown us, Vin, I said in the fans' forum, we're ahead of what they expected. So clearly, top six was the target. John said, big up, big, uh, big C. Pep managed the Barca B team before he managed Barca. He promoted Busquets into the first team. He was ready to go. You know, he was ready to go. Um, big up to Tyson Mitchell. If I run a 100-meter race and win the personal best time of 25 seconds because everyone falls down, am I likely to win again and do I really deserve credit? Arteta is the runner, C. We're done. I, you know, I hear what you're saying there. But the thing is, in life, in football, even though I agree with you and I think Arsenal are fourth because Man United have crumbled. If Man United had held their own, we wouldn't be fourth. The reality is, in the history books, they don't write the circumstances. So I do understand what you're saying. Is this Ole Gunnar Solskjaer part two in that you've achieved something, but everyone can kind of see you're not that guy long term? Um I think when Arteta came to the club, he would have come on the basis that, listen, you've got to give me three years. You can't do what you did to Unai Emery and sack him after 18 months. You got If you want me, I'm coming for three years minimum. And I think they said, no matter what happens, we'll give you three years at this football club. And, and I think they're saying, you know what? We'll ignore the first two. It's about what's happening now, and they're delighted with what's happening now because he's going to make them a whole heap of money. Penalty spot said, Curtis, the board and the fans have a different target agenda, 100%. This is the issue. Until we are all aligned, they were always spot on, spot on with that. Why are Liverpool at the top now? Because their fans demanded. Jurgen Klopp, boom. Someone messaged me in the comments and said, oh, it took Klopp five years to get... I said, bro, he got Champions League in in his second season. His first full season, he got Champions League. I believe in his third season, he got um, Champions League final and lost. Then they won it. Then they won the Prem. So, but what we want and what the owners want are two totally different things. Um, big up to the community. Big up to every one of you. Apparently, I missed a member, a new member. 
Um, thank you for putting that in the comments. Someone who just put that. I can't see it. Can't see it at all. Uh, big up C unit is that hat. Our long awaited merch. I wish, man. I wish this is just, I think this is Cincinnati or someone, but I just wanted it because C unit business, you know. Did I miss the um, new member? I can't see it anyway. Oh, here we go. Shahira, big up to you, bro. And I um, appreciate becoming part of the committee. I know you've been, I think you've been a member before, right? Um, so I appreciate it. Uh, this club is a shambles. Taib is not happy. Shamba said, Big C, the fans are more ambitious than the owners. Let me get into a couple of things before we um, break down the press conference and that. I'm only going to briefly go over the interview um, that he gave this morning because we have gone for it. I mean, I thought this was the standout. This is from his press conference um, that he's just done, and, and I will read that. Arteta said, the club offered me the contract when we lost three matches. Now, is he referring to the three at the start of the season? Or is he talking about the three that happened a couple of weeks ago? I mean, I haven't read the press conference. That one stood out to me. I'm going to go through the press conference shortly. But is he talking about after the first three games? Or is he talking about the Palace games? This press conference is going to be wild. Um, but this is this is the crazy thing about us. Yeah, Mikel. Uh, uh, Mikel should be thinking, damn, I've just lost three games. I'm scrambling. You know, maybe they're ringing me to say, listen, this is the dreaded um, call of faith, you know. But uh, they gave him a new deal. He's talking about the three a couple of weeks ago. Okay, that's more understandable. Again, he was almost guaranteed Europa. This, listen, for me, I'm going to be totally honest with you people. Everything we're reading today, everything we're seeing, I think I have a bigger issue with the Cronkays than I do Mikel Artel. And some of you will be shocked with that because, as I always say, bad players don't sign themselves, bad players don't pick themselves, and managers don't pick themselves, and managers don't dictate what happens with the contract. You've got to ask questions of the Cronkays in all of this. In the background, Stan isn't saying anything. Josh pops up once every few months. Where is he? How come he doesn't come to games? He's talking about the connection with the fans. I never see Josh Cronkett games. Uh, Deshaun, big up to you for becoming a member. I, I, I believe you was a member already as well, bro. Um, so big up for your support as always. Someone said, how do you become a member? Should be there next to the subscribe button. If you're on an iPhone, I think you have to go to the desktop version. Fit said, what an absolute joke, uh, Arsenal are. Yeah, you've just, yeah, yeah. Do you know what, Mikel, mate? Yeah. Hey, hey, Mikel, it's Josh. Yeah, how you going, mate? Yeah, I see you just lost three games in the last week and you've nearly bottled top four. Yeah, well, you know, I've got no part. Hey, I've got no Tierney. I didn't get a striker. Yeah, um, he's probably like, well, Josh, please don't sack me, man. I can turn this around. Sack you? <laughs> I'm not sacking you, mate. Three more years. Your contract's on your desk, mate. Open the drawer. Get it signed. You ain't going nowhere, mate. Three more years. I mean, come on. The man should have been scrambling after three defeats. They, they was rewarding him. Uh, the timing's unbelievable. It really is. But, hey, what, what do you expect? What do you expect? Now, I wanted to just quickly talk about this before we get into Arteta's situation a little bit more. I do actually want to focus on Kronke a little bit. He can't get away with this. What's going on? Now, we spoke about this. Let me just take that logo off. We spoke about this earlier in the season. And I think it's relevant again now. Arsenal players are in line for bonuses of up to £500,000 each if they qualify for the Champions League this season, while some stars would see their weekly wages automatically increase with a top four finish. Mikel Arteta side are in pole position to finish fourth. Champions League qualification is worth at least £50 million. A one-off bonus would be due to the squad for finishing in the top four. And as I said, people, the Champions League is going to separate the men from the boys. We're going to see what the Cronkays are really about. We're going to see what Mikel Arteta is really about. I, I'm actually glad this situation is occurring because what you do, you find out that, okay, I got it wrong. Arteta is a top manager. Or you say... Okay, he's hit his ceiling. He can't take us no further. Now you can see that he's not good enough. You also see with the Cronkays, 
You're not serious. Forget all that PR and telling us you want to be back at the top. You can't go and spend 90 million this summer and, and tell me that that's going to get us anywhere because we've done them Champions League watch-alongs the other day. Don't get me wrong, not every team in the Champions League is at that level of, of Real Madrid and, and City, but the level is there, people. Stringer Bell said, Curtis, bro, I'm going to ask who is going to replace him. Listen, I think I've said many times, I would take a wild offer for Zinedine Zidane. He's out of work. He's won three Champions Leagues, two league titles. I think Roberto Mancini would come to Arsenal, and I think he's a top manager. Won the Euros. He won the league in Italy. He won the Premier League with Man City. I think Mancini is a very good manager. So there's two at least. You know, I don't buy into this whole, oh, you can't get anyone better to replace him. You can't. I'm not saying I would, but I'm just saying don't let's not believe that you cannot replace Mikel Arteta because you can. Uh, Red and White Pappy said, yo, Curtis, loving the content, gangster. Let's give all the support to Arteta until the end of the season, whether we like his profile or not. Top four, come on, you Gunners. Listen, let's get one thing clear. Outside of this stream and everything that we're talking about, I will completely back this team until the end of the season, every match day. We'll have debates, arguments, discussion. This is part of creating content. It has to be done. Some people are happy today. Some people aren't. Every match day, this team will get my full support. I want them in the Champions League with that music. I told you I will eat humble pie if this manager gets us top four. But today, we're going to have that discussion. But they will get my full support, 100%. Michael said, Zidane, you wish your wishes won't come true with Kronke. Listen, you never know, do you? Would you have expected Spurs to get Conte? Sometimes managers, owners, they have to change. But it's unlikely. I've said many times. I think Zidane was linked with Man United and he said he didn't really want to come to England. So uh, he's probably not that interested. Four more cup finals, says South London's finest. Top four is not guaranteed. And you're right. You're right on that one. It is not guaranteed. So uh, I think you are panicking too much. Listen. I'm not even panicking because I expected it. I just think the timing was risky um, because I think you increase the pressure on him. But I think the club are just looking for stability. And, and I think what people have to understand, like I said, uh, Edu will be having meetings with agents from weeks ago trying to convince players to come to us. It's very difficult to convince a player um, when your manager has 12 months left. So I do understand from that point of view. Big up Blue Crew said, loving the content. Do you feel if Kronke or Edu will actually back Arteta though? No point getting top four then. We literally have to get fourth. If they really want to trust this guy, we must get fourth. Listen, I mean, Edu is only given what he's given. You know, he can't spend 100 million if he's not given it. It's down to the Kronkes. And uh, like we said, man, we have to, if we get fourth, we've got to maintain and, and build. No point getting fourth then finishing seventh. You've got to stay in the top four establish yourself again as a Champions League club, start winning trophies, start challenging. Um, Johan said, I would say now with the contract renewal, a consistent top four finish for the next three seasons is a must for Arsenal to be on the world stage again. Um, and I agree with that. I agree, you know. We, we, we have to now... Um, we have to now establish ourselves back as a Champions League club. We're not looked at as a Champions League club anymore because we've been out the competition for four or five years. What we got to do, get back in the top four, establish ourselves, bring in some stars and move the club forward. The club is what we need to be successful, people. I've always said before, I'm not that bothered who the manager is, just do the best for the club. Um, John72 said, Curtis Zidane isn't really passionate about management. He took Madrid because it was a dream job. He will only take Juve or France. Now, I hear you on that. doesn't seem in a rush. Baba Tunde said, big up, big C. Getting a top manager won't be an issue. But tell me which top manager will want to sign if owners ain't ready to spend big. Well, let's see. The proof will be in the pudding. They spent 150 last summer. Let's see if they go for it this summer. And uh, we'll see. Big up, Econ Wizard, who said, big up yourself, big C. Have a good weekend, my bro. Big up to you. 1,200 of you in the chat. And like I said, people, if you want to see my initial reaction... I did do a show this morning at 10.15. Kevin Campbell joined me for around 20 minutes. The show was about 55 minutes. Um, that one was a bit more based off emotion. I have calmed down a little bit now. And listen, we've just, listen. all I would say to everyone, four games, we've got to back the club. We'll discuss it all summer. But for the next four games, we've all got to get behind this team. These players, 
and push us over that line. After that, we'll start breaking down the Cronkays, Edu, Arteta. We'll have that discussion. So um doesn't even seem like we spent 150 million. That team got no spine. Listen, we spent 150 on about nine players or what, seven players. You're not going to get top quality for that. You need to spend 150 on three players. You know, you probably got to spend 200 million plus in the summer. Yes, people, it's Friday. Smash the light. Hope you've all had a great week. Looking forward to the weekend. Um, just to give you a bit of insight, tomorrow we will do a... We're going to do a watch-along tomorrow night, 7.30, Saturday night football, uh, Liverpool against Tottenham. So make sure you join me for that from 7.30. On Sunday, we'll obviously be doing the Arsenal watch-along against Leeds. And... Um, and, and yeah, hopefully it'll be a great weekend. Now, Faz, listen, all football fans, we get caught up on emotion. We do. That's the reality, you know. Um, that's, that's when you care about your club. But sometimes, even if you don't agree with something, you've got to look at why they're doing it, whether it's going to benefit us or whether it's going to hold us back. Time will tell. That's the only thing we can do right now. We've got no other option. Sal said, I'll be there, Big C. Yeah, man, looking forward to it. Listen, all Arsenal fans will obviously become uh, Liverpool fans for 90 minutes tomorrow evening. And I actually want Liverpool to batter Tottenham as well, try and get that uh, goal difference. Four games, four wins, then let's party. Come on, man. Hopefully I'll be on the America tour in the summer in Orlando. They're going to Baltimore as well. Should be a great summer. Just get that Champions League. Madrid derby watch along? Nah, I don't think I'm going to do that, to be honest, man. Real have won the league already. It's a bit of an empty fixture. Um, man saying you'll never walk alone. I'm telling you, man, I'll, I'll sing it before the game. I don't mind. We'll, we'll be scousers. I'll sound like I'm from Brookside, man. Uh, right, let's get into the press conference. Let's get prime waffle ready. Uh, Arteta, let's hear what he had to say. I did discuss uh, earlier on in the show... Uh, about his contract and the things that he had to say. I'll just quickly recap something that we didn't uh, speak about earlier. Uh, Edu did an interview. I don't really care about what he said. Uh, Arteta said, this is where I want to be on his new contract. I'm not even going to go for all this because I'm expecting the press conference to be like an absolute 50-page uh, story. On signing the contract, he said, I'm excited on how he pressed he is with Jonas, who is obviously works with the women's team. We're not going to talk about that. On his relationship with the board, probably the way I would define it, it would be empathy, the same purpose and trust, because the moment I got to know Josh, uh, I saw a real sense that the energy was flowing. We were really clear and direct. He was showing the same ambition as I was. Let's skip it. On the timing of the announcement, the club was really eager to do it quick. Obviously, they showed a lot of faith with the coaching staff, the direction to give it a final push, to give some clarity about what we have to do in the summer in the future. It was a way of saying, listen, from both ways, we believe in what we are doing and we want to commit to the project together, which is, listen, we don't even have to read too much into it. Uh, we know why this deal has been done, why they've done it now. They want to give clarity. They want to build for the summer and sign players um, on what he's achieved so far. <laughs> it's a good question. He said, my main target was to set and instill the values and respect of how everybody was going to represent this club. Uh, he said, that has led to unity around the club. On the ambitions in the short, to take the club to the next level, to compete with the top teams, we have to be playing in the Champions League. Get that fourth spot, bro. How important the fans will be. For me, they have been the tsunami of this project. We've been the tsunami people, like a gush of waves coming in from the side of the Emirates. On whether he sees the benefit of this in the players, said absolutely. On feeling at home, I've experienced it in the dressing room. On his backroom staff, he said they'll continue. Right, we'll move. We'll go back from that. Let's get into the press conference. He's over the moon. He signed the deal. It's press conference reaction time. Mickey Ross, waffle settings. The brand new three-year contract. He came out like um, Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Uh, he's called us the tsunami. That could be a slide diss. No, I'm joking. Uh, we're the tsunami of the football club, apparently. We come gushing in from the Emirates. The tsunami is from the leaking roof, I'm telling you, man. Pes uh, yeah, the press conference definitely got to move to Twitch, 100%. I'm going to separate that um, from this so we can watch it. What's good, Big C? I can't help in, but any time Mick Ross leads us to victory, I will be responding with co-man music. 100%. Right, let's get into the waffle. 
This is going to be prime waffle. I've got a feeling some of these answers will be long. Um, right, on the team news, obviously we play Leeds on Sunday. Is Ben White... On team news, Ben White is still in contention. So he needs to train tomorrow to make sure that he's available to play. And for the rest, there's no news. Everybody should be okay. Now, I believe, could be wrong on this, but from what I read, Ben White hasn't trained with the group all week. He's been doing individual training. Obviously, it's a tight hamstring. It's a risky injury if you're not 100%. The hamstring is a big muscle that is easy to pull when it's weak. So I wouldn't be surprised if Ben White didn't play this game. i got to be honest because we play Tottenham on Thursday. Going up against Kane, Song, Kulazewski, I think you need him at 100% for that game. So... If you was asking me, if he's anything less than 100%, I would not play him against Leeds. I've got to be honest, um, because I think we need to play Tottenham with Ben White and Gabriel. You're playing against a much better front three. So that will be interesting. Let's see if he trains today. I'm sure the training pictures will be out um, shortly. So uh, we'll see on that one. Um, on signing a new deal, uh, he said, I'm delighted, obviously, from both sides. We have shown a real commitment of what we want to do together um, in this beautiful journey. And the plans and the vision that we share, that's the reason why I'm doing it. I think the club is going... I think the club is doing it because we share the same beliefs, the same passion, and the same level of trust about each other and how we're doing it. And I'm really excited we can do it together. It's, oh, here we go. Don't risk him. Holding should suffice for the Leeds game. I agree. I, I would not risk him. I would definitely not risk him. Um, on facing Leeds, he said it's a lot to play for. Obviously, the situation that they are in, they're going to show how much they want to get out of that zone quickly as possible for us. This is the defining moment of the season. After everything we've done, we want to capitalise on what we've done in the last nine or ten months. I mean, these this next week for Arsenal is absolutely massive. It is massive. We play Leeds on Sunday. We then play Tottenham Thursday night. That watch-along, people, I mean, I might have to tell the neighbours not to worry because the noise levels are going to be mad. I'll try and get a preview before that, get a Spurs fan maybe on Wednesday. So we play Tottenham Thursday night. We then play on the following Monday, Monday night football, away at Newcastle. Then, obviously, the week after we play Everton. Two weeks left of the season, people. Then we're done. We'll know where we're at. But I think in the next eight, nine days, you'll know what competition Arsenal are going to be playing in. Uh, if this next seven days goes well, we, we should be all right. But like you said, this Leeds game will be dangerous. They're fighting for their lives. They're in a decent run of form, apart from the actual battering they got against Man City, um, which can happen to anyone. Nimbo said, please, Liverpool, help us. Come on, man. I'll be singing You'll Never Walk Alone on Saturday on the Watch Along. 7.30 Watch Along tomorrow night, people. Liverpool against Spurs. Um, on Rangers reaching the Europa League final, he's obviously a former Rangers player. Um, so happy for them, especially with what happened in the last few days with Billy. I believe that was their kit man who'd been at the club for about 30 years, passed away. Uh, was someone that I love so much and I have great memories and you just have to see the reaction from everybody towards him. Hopefully they can dictate, dedicate that obituary to him and uh, lift the trophy now because I can't imagine how Glasgow will be if they might. Listen, personally, I really hope Rangers... Um, win that Europa League, I think it will be great for them. And, uh, you know, considering they got relegated to the lower leagues a few years ago. On making improvements ahead of this weekend, he said, hopefully we can play better with the ball than we did. Man said he should be the Rangers manager. Do you know what? I have to big up Van Bronckhorst as well, former Arsenal player, man, when Gerard left. That was a tough job for him and he's gone there and done well. Uh, he said, it is true that as well as we did, a lot of good things in that game to earn the right to win the way we competed and the strength of West Ham and how much we limited them. Every game has different demands against Leeds. It will be a completely different game the way they play, but really competitive as well. Obviously, we battered them 4-0. No, 4-1 earlier in the season. To be fair, they had players missing. Um, but I think this will be a tough game against Leeds. They will not make it easy. One place in particular that concerns me is Nuno Tavares at left-back playing against Rafinha. Rafinha's a problem. Got close ball control, very skillful, got pace. Do you play Nuno Tavares at left-back 
or do you bring Cedric in at left back? Now, he says that Tommy Asu is available, so he can play at right back. Do you trust Tavares or not? Uh, Giovanni doing very well. Uh, he never speaks tactics. Does he really know what's happening? Uh, yeah, man, Gio doing bits in Scotland. AT7 said, Big C, my brother, how are you? Uh, when you went live earlier, it was 6 a.m. Couldn't believe you were so calm. Thought you would be fuming. Do you know what? There's no point being angry. There's no point. I'm, I don't completely agree with this decision. See, I, I don't agree with it, to be honest. I, I, you know, I said before, as an analogy, they don't give Usain Bolt the gold medal at 60 metres. Someone don't run on the track and throw the gold medal over and go, you know what, mate? You're ahead of Blake by two metres. You've won this. Throw the gold medal on him. You get across the finish line and you go and collect your trophy. Um, I just think Arteta should have been made to get fourth, then announce it. As I said, to add balance to the debate, they won a top six. So as far as they're concerned, he has crossed the finish line. He's already achieved what they asked. Top four is a bonus in their mind. So the target of me, the target of the club is two totally different things. So I have to accept that. What can I do about it? I can come on here and rant and rave and say this, that, the other. At the end of the day, the football club we support is in a good position. Let's hope we finish the season well and build on it. That's all I can do. No point me coming on here and shouting. Um, it's the haircut. It's, yeah, man, they love the Lego haircut, man. Uh, that is for sure. On Leeds style, he said it's a game that they change, especially their formation because they played before facing Man City. We are where I mean, they've been playing quite defensive. I did a preview on Cage's channel. Big up to him. And he said they've been playing free at the back a lot of the time and, and defending. Um, so, yeah, we, it's going to be difficult to see how they turn up. Rafinha will smoke Tavares, said Jay Boxy. Uh, this was... Um, Penalty spot said fourth place with this team is a great result for Arsenal. United and Spurs would have gifted that to us. Champions League football will be how Arteta will be measured. As Curtis said, no hiding place. And the thing is, as a club, even though I agree with that, if United had got their act together, we wouldn't be in this conversation of top four. But that's not our problem at the end of the day. If we go and spend 200 million in the summer and all of a sudden we look like an exciting, thriving team, no one will care that Man United flopped. We just got to do our job, you know. Kembo said, new contract for Big C. Great content. Big up your damn self, bro. Um, Arteta was the January signing. You're probably right there. You're probably right. On how important he thinks the fans have been. He said, it's lifting us. That chemistry and connection is growing every week. You can sense that the players certainly do. They talk about the difference it makes to play in the stadium. Even when we are away from home, the incredible support that we get was something that we were missing in the last two years. We discussed it many times. In my opinion, it's a game changer. It's their energy and their emotion towards the team is contagious. I've got to admit, and I say this, fans in the stadium and away from home have been brilliant with the club this year. They've been very patient. They really have. They've been patient. Um, we can't risk Nuno. That's an interesting one. Do you know what? Let's get a poll up. Let's get a poll up. Uh, first poll of this stream. Against Leeds, bear in mind that Rafinha plays right wing. He'll be up against our left back. Who would you play left back against Rafinha? Um, who would you play left back against Rafinha? Would you stick with him or would you go Cedric? Um, Rafinha. Because he is a good player. Um, right. You could even play Saka there, but I don't think anyone would. Who would you play left back against Rafinha? Rafinha, a player that I'll be looking at closely, by the way, because I, I actually wouldn't mind Arsenal signing him. I think he's a very good player. Nuno, Cedric. I'll put Saka in there just, just for the sake of the vote. Or Saka. There you go. Polls out, people. Um, I did do a poll on the earlier stream about um, Arteta. Maybe we'll do one after this one about Arteta. More polls than a strip club, bro. Play, uh, big up Arteta. KG's happy. Play Nuno. Play Saka. Man said Kenny Sampson. JR said, I'll stick with Tavares. I mean, if you take him out, you could hammer his confidence. That's the only thing. Mangis says Cedric. Scarity said, stick with him. His confidence is already shaky. Saka or Lacazette. Cedric first off, then Nuno. It's interesting. It's interesting your thoughts on it, people. Let me know who you would play at left-back against Leeds. 
Uh, on Lewis Dunford's song becoming a local anthem, he said, I've had thousands and thousands of requests from all supporters to go and do something about it. We want to listen to them. It's great. They are bringing initiatives now. We don't have to do anything. It's up to them. They feel it. They want to earn it. Lots of things around the stadium. Do you know what's funny? He doesn't say anything about the actual song. Uh, I have listened to it. It's a decent song. And whether his starting 11 is untouchable despite interest from other clubs. He said, well, what we want to do is to improve the team and the squad. Obviously, we know that there is not a player that doesn't have a margin to improve or evolve in his way of playing or career. We want to retain our best players for sure, and we want to add into that more quality and depth to be competitive. I mean, there are players being linked with moves. Um, I seen the other day Gabriel being linked with... Um, who is it? Juventus were being linked with Gabriel. I think Saliba's being linked with Atletico Madrid uh, and Real Madrid. So players are being looked at. There's been rumours of Liverpool with Martinelli before. So it'll be interesting. Maxwell said put Tommy Asso on the left and Cedric on the right. That's an interesting one. Saka needs to play up front. Our attack goes through Saka. Um, we're losing Martinelli soon. I'm calling it. Fit said, who cares about confidence? Tavares defending is awful. The team must come first. I hear you on that. I hear you on that. We got to win. I don't care if the man's confidence is hurt. You got to do the basics right, bro. You can't even pass the ball. Saliba was horrendous last night. I didn't watch the game. I mean, they drew nil-nil, right? Um, but yeah, I know, obviously, Reese Nelson was playing right wing for Feyenoord. Guendouzi sent a mid for Marseille and, and Saliba at the back. Yeah, Saliba was average, said Faz as well. Um, yesterday, but yeah, it is what it is, isn't it, really? Let's see. Um, on previous Arsenal teams having to sell star players, whether it's time with a different journey, said what we have to be really prepared for is when we're going to do that and why we are going to do that. I, see, I don't like that answer. I don't like, don't say um, when we are going to do that and why we are going to do that. That To me, I think you should be saying, you know, I'm hoping that we don't have to do that. He said, we can control those timings and we have the decision making on when is the right time to do it and be prepared for that. So sometimes it is a negative because you cannot offer the same competition level as they have been offered or because you think it is the right moment to make a move. But in principle, we want to maintain our best players, keep them and get better. Hmm. I don't love that answer. I can't lie. I, I get it. Sometimes as a club, you do have to sell a big player. I just would have liked to have heard him be a bit more like, do you know what? We have no real plans of selling our best players. I know he says it at the end, but I feel like he's kind of saying there, hmm, you know, eventually we might have to sell one of our big players. He's buttering us up a little bit there. Or am I reading too much into it? I don't know. DV said, Big C, I would have waited to the offer the contract, but let's be real. No one expected us to be fighting for top four. The team has overachieved. Some fans won't admit it. Listen, at the start of this season, with Arteta in charge and the squad that we had with the players that we bought, I wouldn't have expected fourth. Simple as that. I'm, I'm saying it. I'm saying it now. I, as a fan, expect Arsenal to get top four, but Arsenal are not where I expect them to be as a football club. The way this season has transpired, he should get top four. We spent the most. We've had the most stability in the fact that the manager's been here longer than the Man United and Tottenham manager. So that's where I would say. All players leave at some point. Yeah, they do. But the way that question was answered makes me think at some stage, one of these young players might get sold. Uh, South London's fine. He's setting it up for the future. Faz said, would you take Rashford? I would at the right price. I have to say that carefully and then hide because they start throwing rocks at me in the comments. I have to start ducking down. At the right price, I would take Rashford. I'm not going to lie, but United wouldn't sell him on the cheap. Sally said, we've underachieved the last couple of seasons. And there you go. Everything requires balance, people. Yeah, he's overachieved this year, but he finished eighth last year. So last year he failed. This year he's overachieving, people will say. The balance is somewhere in the middle. Big up. I respect it. Yeah, Ivan saying Curtis time. I told you, man, I cover my head when I say that. Um, let's carry on anyway. A bit more waffle. I don't know how long. How long is this press con? Oh, man. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. Right. Um, where was I? Um, right. On the timeline around his new contract. This is interesting. He said the club was so decisive and committed 
um, to do it now. They wanted to bring clarity, starting from ownership, about what we were doing and show the stability and commitment to the project. And don't have to worry or something about any of that. Um, man said Trashford is banned on this channel. Whether we want to recruit players or keep the players that we want and they can see a clear path in the future and there is no question marks. From the moment that they questioned me about my feeling, I was very clear, I was ready to commit here, really happy here and the job is still a lot to do. I mean, as I said, again, just to add balance, whether you're a fan of Arteta or not, they're in negotiations right now to give Saka a new contract. They'll be talking to potential new players about coming to the club. If you are not showing commitment to your manager, people will question whether they'll stay with the club or not. Now, I think a lot of this is PR spin. I think an aggressive club could have said, listen, Mikel, you get top four, then come and have that meeting. Until then, carry on doing your job. That's probably how I would have managed the club. But at the end of the day, I'm not a billionaire. I don't own Arsenal. I'm just a football fan. So they ain't gonna listen. They're not gonna do business like that. Um, but it is what it is, people. You know, it is what it is. No to Rashford. That's why we are signing young players so they have sell-on value. It's it's a business plan. It's a business plan. You get Odegaard for thirty. Smith Rowe Saka through the system. Saliba twenty-seven mil. We paid it years ago. One of them eventually will probably be sold for big money. Um, you know, good thing you're not making the decision. <laughs> you better get top four, Riddler. I'll come back for you. You know, I'm telling you, Arsenal overachieving and we are still moaning. Listen, Arsenal, let me get this right. Let me make this very clear. And I want everyone to listen to what I'm saying here. Arsenal are not overachieving. Let me make this clear. Arsenal finishing fourth is not an overachievement. Because we, people wanted Arsene Wenger sacked for finishing fourth. Arsenal finishing fourth is not an overachievement. Arteta finishing fourth as Arsenal manager is an overachievement. Let me get that clear. Arsenal have finished fourth many, many times. And we've been screwing at the end of the season saying this is foolishness. So I'm, I'm saying it for the people at the back. Yeah, I'm saying this loud and clear. Arsenal finishing fourth ain't no overachievement. That was actually seen as failure at one stage. That's the football club, the ownership and the mentality of what they've put on us as fans. Now, what happens when a club makes you believe that finishing outside the top four is not failure? You look crazy if your standards stay where they used to be. This is what happens. I have this debate all the time. People say, what? you got to move with the times. We're not that club anymore. That's what people say to me. I say, well, my, my season ticket price never dropped. The shirts are getting more expensive. So why shouldn't I expect it? I'm also a realist and I realise, you know, we don't have Thierry Henry up front. We haven't got Vieira in midfield and Tony Adams at the back. David Seaman in goal. So I am realistic enough to know where we are as a football club. But I ain't going to start saying that Arsenal getting fourth is, oh my God, Arsenal. We're not Southampton. We're not Crystal Palace. You know, we're not Newcastle. Top four is the, the minimum. That should be the minimum for Arsenal Football Club. It's the ownership of pulled this club down, turned us into a business, turned us into a fashion brand, and turned us into a PR company. So because we've suffered for so long, the basics look like luxuries, people. The basics look like luxuries because of what they've done to us. If you come to my house now and I say, oh, you say I'm hungry and I say, oh, you can have some dry bread. You're going to say, what? I don't want that. I'm not eating that. I want some proper food. If you starve for the next two, three days, that dry bread's going to start looking like a nice meal to you people. That's all they've done to us. They've starved us. We used to get big dinners. Now we're getting crumbs off the plate. So fourth looks like we need to do a, a, a parade if we get fourth. That's the reality, people. That's the reality. Everything's in context, like people are saying. With this manager, with this team, youngest team in the league, blah, 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 fourth is an achievement. It is an achievement. And as fans, you've got a right to feel happy about it, of course. Champions League, the music, better players, 
get that stature back to the football club of being a big club. But we could, we also need to keep pushing. Don't take fourth and go, that's it, we got fourth, celebrate, oh my God, we're back. No, go again, what's next? Fourth, yeah, cool, big fist, respect, yeah man, let's go, music. Now what? Now what are we doing? How do we catch Man City? How do we catch Liverpool? How do we overtake Chelsea, you know? It is what it is. You got me off guard here. I've, I've gone on one here. Apologies. Yeah, I know. Dry bread. You know what I'm talking about, innit, it, though? These man been starving us. So the, the basics look like luxuries, people. I'm telling you. Uh, not a luxury, but a step in the right direction. This is a different team. Not Wenger's, not Emery's. Of course, if next season we finish outside the top four, it's not good enough. Listen, man, when you finish eighth back to back and you're a giant of a football club, the alarm bells should have been ringing and the alarm bells weren't ringing. And the club have even said they were happy to get top six this season. That was their target. So their ambition is not that great as ownership, you know? And that's why I say maybe we should have a bigger issue with the Cronkays than Artel. Uh, Snake Eye said, Big C, when we come to your house for the C unit party, you better not offer us dry bread. <laughs> hey, man, so give me some dry bread and water, people. You know what I mean? Uh, is success based on the manager you hire? Venga top four, Arteta top six, I think. I think better managers recruit better players, have a, a better philosophy and style of football, and you expect a better manager to 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 push you up that ladder quicker. So I, I think Wenger was classified as a world-class manager with years of experience. So I think the expectation of him was higher than Arteta. Were Liverpool supporters happy with not winning a league title for decades before Klopp? No, they wasn't. Arsenal supporters are no different. And listen, Liverpool went 30 years. Liverpool went 30 years. But they would get a Champions League every so often. That can probably hold you for five years if you've won a Champions League. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it is different. Let me carry on with the waffle anyway. I went a bit off topic there, people, but I had to say it. Um... He said, uh, I was very clear. Right, let's move on. Yeah, I read that. And when he told the players, he said, they found out this morning. Some of them have been asking me for months because they have questions about their individual futures because they read some news as well. Uh, he's probably hinting there. They read news as well that he was being linked with other clubs. And that is not something I want to be talking about. I want zero distraction about that. So this afternoon, that's done. It's clear for the future. Now the focus is on Leeds. As I said... Whether you're happy or not, the club wants stability. The club want clarity. They want Saka to know I'm staying. So if you want to sign your contract, you know I'm here. They want new signings to know I'm staying. The staff. Clarity is important in a football club. And I can say that. Having been at a club, when a manager signs you and you think he might leave, you panic. You're like, oh my days, I was going to sign a new deal or blah, blah, blah. I'm playing every week. So from within the club, they will see this as, as good news. Where You know what I mean? Whether you agree with it or not. Uh, 1,500 of you in the chat, people. Smash that like button. Big up everyone tuned in on Twitch. Big up everyone on YouTube. See you, Nick Business. Lick down the like button. Subscribe. Let's get through this waffle. Um, so the players found out this morning on how it affects the summer. He said, so we can explain to players when you are discussing the possibility of prolonging their stay or recruiting someone who's playing for a different club, you have to explain how you are going to do it and in detail so they know and expect clearly what they are going to believe in if they join our club. In order to do that, the club thought it was the best moment. Listen, and, and, and as I've said, you know, I'm sounding like a broken clock. Um, man said, what will you do if he gets top four? We we have a little I don't know we have a little celebration stream why not Arteta on the green screen maybe we eat some waffles live on air I don't know people we'll think of something let's cross that bridge when we come to it but as I said when you know a manager's staying it's different you need clarity Chris you're spot on RVP signed for United Sir Alex left man got left with David Moyes it all crumbled I think Zaha was signed by Sir Alex as well and we all know about him and David Moyes. in it real quick so yeah you need to know who's there um all right let's carry on on whether it was linked to european qualification he said the club offered me the contract when we lost three matches that day i went like this chapeau 
I mean, listen, people, someone got to let me know here. The sound went, apologies, did it? Yeah, I know. I just whacked the microphone. So if it went quiet for a second, chapeau, what, what, what does he mean here? Someone let me know. I only got a B in GCSE English. I don't even know what that means. I'm going on to Google now. I'm copy and pasting. I need to know what that means. Chapeau. What? It's bringing up a hat. I don't know what that means. How do you chapeau? Different style. Oh, people. Someone clever let me know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't even know what that means. He said, that day I went like this. Chapeau. Chapeau means hats off. There we go. Puds, big up your damn self. It was showing me a picture of a hat. I'm like, what's going on? Chapeau, chapeau, chapeau. Man's taking his hat off the club. Block. Yeah, bro, I would have took my hat off if they offered me a contract after three defeats. Jeez. <laughs> chapeau, El Chapo. There we go. Um, imagine losing three games and being offered a new deal. Man said, I think he's calling it cap. <laughs> Oh, dear me. Arteta, man's making me copy and paste. I didn't even know what it meant, people. Apologies. Um, and that doesn't happen in football. That's a part of what they think. The conversations they have, the belief they have in myself, the coaches and the staff, what we are doing, the people that we have at the club and leading this club, I haven't seen it. And I just got, I just got emotional when I see it. And I said, you guys are serious and committed. I'd better push forward. <sighs> uh, so Arteta's in tears, people. Arteta's in tears. <laughs> I haven't even got the drink, so I can't even go quiet and sip the drink. Um, but yeah, Arteta's crying, people. He's crying. Uh, he's never seen support and backing like it. Uh, tears of Joy, track free on Cone Man Music by Mickey Rose, the Teflon Don. <laughs> Just sprinkles a waffle, man. The Wolf of Waffle Street. <laughs> I mean, that's an absolute banger. The Wolf of Waffle Street. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. <laughs> Three more years, people. Um, but he's in tears. He's in tears. Uh, tears and Waffles. New mixtape out now by Mickey Ross. Emotionally scarred. Lil Mickey. <laughs> oh, dear me. Joel said, yo, Big C, don't you think the top 10 teams in the Prem now are better than they were before, making it harder? I'll be honest with you. I think um, I think this is, I think it's a pretty average Premier League overall. Going to be honest. I can see what you mean. Maybe the mid-table teams are better than they used to be because they have more spending power now, you know. Palace go and buy players for 30 million and, and that probably didn't happen back then. But... If you look at the top of the league, Man City and Liverpool, they're in a league of their own. Chelsea, average this season. Champions of Europe spent 100 million on Lukaku. They've been bang average. Arsenal, we haven't been that great this season. Let's not cap. And, um, and Man United, this is probably the worst Man United team I've ever seen. So you take Man City and, 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 and Liverpool, I don't think it's a particularly great league at all. Um... You look at the finals in Europe, Liverpool, the only English club in, in a European final. So, no, I don't actually think it's a great team. Man said, I have a dream. Arteta's in tears. Please, polymation penalty spot. Somebody, please get me a picture of Arteta crying. That that has to be the start of the next stream. Hit me up on uh, Twitter, man. The DMs are open. Snake Eye said, I think there is a top two and then there's the rest. I agree. Uh, Soccer has said, I think this situation feels less painful when you have a laugh about it in this channel. I always say, people, information and entertainment. That's my target. I bring light to the situation. Someone said earlier, I'm surprised you're not angry. What's the point? What do you want me to do? I could come on here and go crazy. Ah, ain't going to change nothing. He's here for three more years. So let me get on with it. We'll discuss it and we hope for the best. Jose cried yesterday. I saw that, man. You know, I, I like Jose. I've always liked Jose, man. Uh, let me end this poll, by the way. Let me quickly end this poll because we've had it there for a while. 56% of you said you would play Nuno. Stick by him and, and see what happens. 32 Cedric, 11% Saka. I don't think Saka can go there. We need him in the attack. Uh, maybe we stick by Nuno and hope for the best. Whoever plays left wing better, better help him because Rafinha's going to be on him. Uh, spot on, what's the point? Exactly. We're at, listen, at the end of the day, we're fourth. We just got to hope. Hope for the best. Need a sense of humour in these times, 100%. Uh, 
Let's get through this. So Arteta's crying his eyes out on whether the contract offer is driving him forward. He said, words and facts are very different things. And in football, they can be extremely different in relation to the results. And it's not the case. So they meant something for many months, the conversations that we had, and they put it in a piece of paper after that day. And for me, there's no better way to describe people, to describe the people that we have at the club. Now, let me just say something. This guy is never, ever going to say a bad word about the Cron case. Never. Doesn't matter what they do. They could spend 40 million in the summer and he'll dress it up. Um, because they've obviously been telling him for months, don't worry, we'll give you that contract. Man said, is that piece of paper recyclable? I'm telling you, man, put it in the recycling bin. Um, he loves them. He absolutely loves them. He really does. Dave said Mikel is better than Conte, I think. Uh, see, th these are the type of comments that just um, throw me off, uh, Dave. I mean, I'd love to know what you're basing it on. What, because we're two points ahead of him in the table? Go and look at Conte's resume, man. I think that's, I think that's a little bit premature, man. And, uh, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Uh, Mr. Smith said, I'm going to apply for a job with Arteta. Wish me luck. Listen, he got the Arsenal job with no experience, so I'm sure you can get a job somewhere there. Man said, time out for Dave. Dave Dave's got to be a, got to be on the wind-up, I'm telling you. I actually hope Dave responds because I want to know uh, how what he's basing that on because I have no idea. Um, Arteta, is in the Arteta is the kid in class that tells the teachers who's been no <laughs> Do you know what? I was talking with some friends the other day, and these are Arsenal fans. And um, even though we're fourth, they were like, do you know what? There's just something about Arteta that it's it's hard to like him. He's got an arrogance about him. And BT, I'm telling you, he's the kid who sits at the front of the class. You walk in class, I always just walk to the back. I don't want the teacher to know what's going on. I'm at the back, you know what I mean, swinging on chairs and having a chat with my friends and, you know what I mean, blah, blah, blah. He's sitting right at the front. He's going, sir, look, Curtis is talking again and swinging on his chair. Oh, thanks, Mikel. Don't worry. You can go home five minutes early for that. Curtis, stop swinging on your chair. <laughs> He's there. Listen, man, I'm telling you. Man, Cronkays are just pulling his strings and Arteta is just at the bottom like, yeah, yeah, that way, that way. I'm telling you, man, that brother's getting pulled all over the place and he loves it. Uh, the kid that said you forgot to give us homework, sir. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what he's on. Man's walking out like, yes, it's Friday. Uh, Mikel's like, oh, what about the homework? I really want to read books. You're like, Mikel, man, what's wrong with you, bro? Why don't you go home and play football? I'm telling you, man, you got it bang on. <laughs> oh, Dave's back. Here we go. Oh, come on. Come on, Dave. All right, Dave, mate. All right, Dave. Let's see what Dave says. Here we go. Everyone can see the world-class manager once they've done something. Harder to spot the world-class manager before they've done something. Ah, oh, Dave. <laughs> oh, Dave. <laughs> I mean, uh, I suppose that's what makes you a world-class manager once you have done something, Dave. So I think calling him world-class, Dave, a little bit premature. That's all I would say. Um, Dave, you know what? <laughs> They're calling for a timeout. I'm going to let you off. Um, maybe you can see something in the future. Maybe you're Mystic Meg. Maybe I should call you Mystic Dave. Dave, I respect what you're saying. And listen, it's true. Sometimes you can't see a top player until they're at that level. Sometimes you can't see a top manager until they're at that level. But Dave, you're pushing your luck there, Dave. Dave. Dave! <laughs> Dave, I'm telling you, I love the confidence. Yeah, Dave Cronke. Dave Cronke, mate. Uh, <laughs> David Julian's alter ego. Yeah, we need VAR for Dave, man. I have to go and look at the screen, but damn. Damn, Dave. <laughs> I love it though. Listen, I respect it. Football opinions and all that, people. Um, it's comment of the day. It is comment of the day. It's outrageous. Man said Dave's on them 420 left. <laughs> oh, Dave, man, Dave. Happy weekend to you, Dave. Happy weekend. I love it, people. I love it. Dave is Kevin Campbell. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it could be Kev's burner account, that one. 
Oh, dear me. <laughs> Hilarious stream today. I'm telling you, man. We have to lighten up the mood, man. Hopefully, we hunt down that top four and everything's good. Dave, maybe Dave can see something that we, we're we not quite there with. But uh, putting him ahead of Conte, I mean, I can't I can't get with that one. I really can't. Go and look at that brother's CV. Clip it in case he does become a top manager. Dave, listen, if he gets if he becomes world class, Dave, come back here and, and really, you know what I mean? Let me know what's what. I won't forget this. This is the Dave stream. Dave called Arteta better than Conte. I respect it. Don't agree with it, but I, I respect it. Footballing opinions, people. Uh, bless you, Dave. I am King said it's amazing how we are saying there's no one better than Arteta out there. Bro, my high school coach is better than Arteta and I left in owner. <laughs> I don't know why. Listen, we lost Thierry. We lost Aubameyang. We lost Van Persie. We lost Sanchez. We lost Burkamp. We've lost monsters. We, you know, Wenger, George Graham. We shouldn't be... He's doing a good job at the moment, but what? We shouldn't be scared. I don't agree when people say we can't replace it. Of course we can, man. Come on. You know what I mean? Um, but I hear you on that one, man. Yeah, man. Big up. D Dave, if you want to come... The streets won't forget, Dave. If it got... And listen, if you're right... Uh, yeah, th there you go. Scott's clipped it. Sixth of the fifth, 2022 at 15.24. Dave said Arteta is better than Antonio Conte. I mean, boy, I'm telling you, Dave, if you're right, you're a genius. If you're wrong, yeah, you could be in a bit of trouble. Only fools and horses. All right, Dave. <laughs> By the way, I'm old school. I've watched every episode of Only Fools and Horses. I'm like an older, younger person. Like, I've... I watch TV programs you wouldn't expect. I watch like Laurel and Hardy and old school comedy. Only Fools and Horses. Come on, man. All right, Dave. Man said, my name's Rodney. So see you later, Dave. <laughs> I think Dave's disappeared. I don't know if we're going to get another comment from him. But uh, big up, Dave. Yeah, Dave Chappelle, brother. They're running up on man on stage with weapons, man. It's all mad. Um... Unless Arteta has money like Pep to spend, he won't be winning anything major. Do you know what? Before we start, before we start rounding up, because I've got to go shortly. Do you believe that Arteta can take Arsenal to the top trophies? Because that's another question that a lot of people are asking. Cool, you've given him a contract for three years. Is he ever going to be able to go past Klopp's and Pep's? Can he ever win the title? Can he ever win the Champions League? Can we can we compete? Or is he that stepping stone manager that gets you to a certain point? And I've said it many times. Brennan Rodgers created something at Liverpool that was exciting, that was they were building, but he couldn't get them over that finish line. I, at the moment, and again, I hope I'm proven wrong. I, at the moment, feel like Arteta's going to reach his ceiling. And we may have to go and get the top one. But then at the same time, you never know if he gets the right players. Maybe he gets over that ceiling. At the moment, I see him as the Brendan Rodgers at Liverpool. And eventually you need that Jurgen Klopp. But give me your opinions before we get out. Uh, I don't think Arteta has the tactics. He's a filler for me. I hear you on that. Uh, Captain Sal said, never. Top four is his level. And I hear you on that. I can't see how he gets past your Klopps and your, and your Peps. Not without a 400 million war chest and not with these players, I agree. May said, no, we always take two steps forward and five steps backwards. All I can see Arteta winning his FA Cups. I hear you on that. That, that could be his level, top four and win, win the odd cup. I'm glad Arteta is staying, said Sergios. Um, I do not rate him. Oh, man, man's a Spurs fan. Let me get, to dear is to Dave. Uh, I hope he reaches that height. Cody Mystified said top four is his ceiling. People, I'm out of here. Big up Charlie as well who said, how good was Klopp at the end of season two? The, listen, the foundations were in place second season. They got fourth in the second season. Season three, by the way, he got to the Champions League final. So, you know what I mean? He was ahead. Uh, and let's finish off like this. I think this is the perfect way to end it. Chapeau to Dave. I tip my hat to you, Dave. Chapeau to Dave. Dave has said that Mikel Arteta is better than Conte. I hope you're right. And chapeau was the word that Arteta used in the press conference. Big up to each and every one of you. Two fantastic streams today. If you didn't watch the earlier stream, go back and check that out. Kevin Campbell came on for about 20 minutes. 
I was a little bit more emotional in that stream, so I was a bit more negative towards Arteta. I think in this stream, I've been kind of balanced and fair to him. Don't forget, people, lick down the like button. Enjoy your weekend. Have a fantastic weekend wherever you are. I'll be back 7.30 p.m. tomorrow night. Um, Liverpool against Tottenham. Watch along. Looking forward to that. We'll all be Scousers tomorrow evening. And then on Sunday, 1 p.m., for the 2 p.m. kickoff, Arsenal against Leeds. Brilliant stream. Big up to everyone. Chapeau to the community. Enjoy your weekend as always, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Liverpool, do us a favour, people. Take care, everyone. Bless.